What's going on, Zannies? Welcome back to another emergency response Liberty County video. The bank. Let's talk about the bank, Zannies. I know I've been neglecting doing one of my famous how-to videos on the bank that normally consists of the ways to rob the bank, how much money is in the bank, and the best way to break into the bank to, of course, make away with all the loot. I'm sorry I've been lacking, but as you guys may know, I've been very, very busy in real life this month of December, but forgive me. Here it is, coming at you, everything you need to know about the bank, and you guys know, nobody does emergency response Liberty County how-to videos like your boy Zany. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and let's get into this one. I'm not gonna bore you with the super fine details of the bank. We all know the bank. We all know where it's at. Here it is, right next to the gas station in all of its glory. See it, know it, live it, moving on. So there really is three ways to break into the bank, whether you know it or not. But before we get into that, it is important that you understand that you must be part of a mafia or have started a mafia in order for you to be able to break into the bank. If you are not part of a mafia, the system will tell you that, hey, you must be in a mafia to start this heist. So with that said, that the first real step here is to create a mafia. Of course, we are starting the very popular and sort of infamous Saini Mafia. And now that you have a mafia, once again, there really is three ways to go about this. The first way is obviously through the drive-thru by just very directly and very straightforward shooting at the window. Once the window is out, the glass will shatter and you will be able to work your way in. Once you are inside the bank, you will need to find the keypad combo. If you click on use keypad, it will tell you find the code somewhere in the bank. To give you guys a super big hint here, the code is normally hiding somewhere on these countertops right here. And if it's not in the countertops, chances are it will be somewhere in this office or somewhere on either one of these desks in this bigger office space here that is accessible to the public. Now that we know where the code is located, we know that to gain entry, we need to enter 0935. Very simple and very straightforward up to this point. So 0935 and we are in. Go downstairs, pretty straightforward here, walk up to the vault, and it'll tell you to hold E to plant explosives. This is sort of time, and the gas does begin to seep out, but as you guys saw, as I was trying to complete the tutorial, I completely ran out of time. The smoke ended up enveloping the room, and I completely ran out of time. It's not a big deal. I really didn't want to break in anyway, because I want to move on to the second way of breaking into the bank. The second way of breaking into the bank is really no different than the first, but the reason why I wanted to separate them is because I've been running into a lot of players that don't know that you can, in fact, shoot the side door, but not just the side door. You can also shoot out the side side window and make entry through either one of those points. The objective remains the same, you still have to find the keypad code and you still have to make your way down to the vault and place the explosives and begin your assault on the bank to make away with all the loot. Now the reason why I wanted to get both of these two out of the way is because these are both considered a hard hit. Whether you go through the drive through the back door or the side window, the cops will be alerted immediately. This will give you absolutely no time to get a leg up on the cops or anything like that. Cops can immediately begin to storm your position and make entry on the bank without any delay. Keep that in mind if you are rolling as a solo mafia or a mafia with only a few members. The third and final way to break into the bank is to do it the stealthy way. If you are good at home robberies, you are going to be very familiar with the lockpick method. I personally prefer the lockpick method because it does afford you the opportunity to be a little bit sneakier and the alarm does not go off immediately, thus the cops not being notified immediately. But other than that, the method is very straightforward and identical to the other two by way of you still having to find the keypad code, making entry, approaching the vault, and placing the explosives, and then looting the vault itself. The process remains identical through all three approaches. The only difference is the point at which the cops are notified. I can't emphasize that enough. Keep that in mind when you consider how big or small your mafia is, you guys. Okay, boys and girls, let's get to some questions and some curiosities that I've been seeing in the comments. The first one, will the explosives on the vault injure you if you don't move out of the way or seek cover? The answer to this one, in case it's not obvious to you, yes, 100%, as you guys can see, the explosives on the vault will 100% kill you if you do not seek cover. So make sure that you and your mafia are properly covered when the explosives do eventually go off. The second question or curiosity I had was about the red laser beams. Can the red laser beams hurt you? And while the answer is yes, they can 100% affect your health 
And in fact, the laser beams will kill you so much faster than the gas wheel that I strongly encourage you to step away from the lasers, jump over them, just avoid them at all costs, Zany. Stay away from the lasers. These will kill you almost instantly if you are already low on health. Moving on over to the tear gas, and this is where things got a little interesting, boys. Funny enough, I did this two different ways unintentionally, but after I did it, I realized I was maybe on to something. Now listen to me. When I first broke into the bank and did absolutely nothing, for whatever reason, don't ask me, I decided to sort of just stand there and do absolutely nothing. And this is where I realized that it took the tear gas a full 90 seconds, that is a minute and a half, to even come out of the vents and start affecting my player and the RLC. On the other hand, however, when I came back and I did it again, and this time opened the vault, it only took the tear gas 45 seconds to start coming out of the vents. This is a difference that I don't quite really understand, to be perfectly honest with you. What triggers the tear gas? Is it being inside the vault? Because clearly, time is not an aspect if you can be in the bank for a full 90 seconds before the tear gas even comes out without having to even break into the vault itself. I hope that makes sense, but watch the video if you don't know what I'm saying because all of these videos are exactly the way I experienced it. The next question is pretty easily satisfied if you paid attention to detail. The question is, what is the time difference or the time delay between a hard hit and say a lock pick break in? Well, that's very simple like I said. It's 60 seconds and it's planted right here on the wall. It'll even count you down letting you know that you have 60 seconds until the the alarm activates. Let's just think about that for a second. You have a full 60 seconds to break in, find the code, work your way down to the vault, and place the explosives all before the cops are even called. Imagine how much money you could potentially get away with, maybe even all of the money in the vault, if you employ the right strategy and have the right mafia members on your side. This is incredible. And again, that is 60 seconds without anybody knowing that you are breaking into the bank. And the last and final question or curiosity I had about the bank, specifically the vault, is how much money is really in here? Well, I'll have you guys know that I did this several different times. Obviously, by the end of this video, I've already broken into the bank easily five or six different times. Because of that, I can tell you with great confidence that most of the gold batches consisted of anywhere between $853 to $1,400 or even $500 some odd dollars, give or take a dollar here or there. The point here is that we have to take the collection average over several different attempts and over several different amounts. Let's quickly put this into context over the course of four different robberies. Yes, you heard correctly. You're about to watch four different robberies and whether I make it out or die, it doesn't matter. All we're really after is averages here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, boys. It is fifteen batches of money with that stack of cash, gold bars, or sacks of money and potentially gold. It really doesn't matter, boys. Let's take the averages here. Remember, I did this over the course of four to six different robberies, and I simply took the averages of every single one of those robberies. I'm not going to go into a math lesson, boys. Just trust that the math has been done just like it has in all of my other videos involving money in Liberty County. So the range I've come up with is that the vault in Liberty County contains anywhere between $17,438 on the low range, all the way up to $20,314 in the high range. That is a heck of a lot of loot, but if we really want to put this into perspective, and if we average it out over the course of four Mafia members, this is going to net you the same or slightly above as if you would hit a good ATM by yourself on any other given day in River City. Because yes, I have hit ATMs that have netted me anywhere between $3,500 all the way up to $4,800 in one hit. So at this point, you really have to consider, am I robbing the bank because I am part of the Mafia and I want to have fun, or am I robbing the bank because I really want to come away with a big haul. If you ask me, at this amount, robbing the bank with a mafia of four members is not really worth it for someone like me who's already pretty good at robberies. The only real time this sort of becomes worth it is if I have another partner in crime who is also really good at robberies and 
understands that we have to move fast throughout the bank. I hope that all makes sense, boys. But anyway, this was a total dive into the bank of Liberty County. This is a complete how to rob the bank and everything you ever need to know about the bank. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And as always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, long live the zanies.